piece of sweet potatoes. That one. That was one I dug up out of the pot just then. This has stayed in the pot all winter long. Look at that. Ready to make slips. We're going we're gonna to plant it again. We're going to put it back in the soil. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Danny and Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. It is that time of the year again, guys. It's time of the year to plant our sweet potatoes in the ground to grow our slips with. Now, we're going to be doing a little bit of a experiment this year. I said we weren't going to be doing any more experimenting, but we're not going to lose on this experiment, so we're going to do it. One is we're going to take the large high tunnel here, and we're going to plant sweet potatoes in two of the pots here. And then we have a small greenhouse on a hill way over here by the cabin that gets super hot. And we're going to plant some in that one and see which ones come up first. Now this soil here is ice cold in this greenhouse here. I mean, it's like really, really cold, which is not really good for planting sweet potatoes. But I, we've got some really warm days coming up ahead. And I'm thinking that the heating of this thing is going to uh should we just took these out of a cooler so them coming from a cooler into a warmer climate hopefully they'll go ahead and pop pretty quick and go ahead and get going so we have two different kinds here we have the ones that are ours these are ours that we raise every year they're like a block of ice sitting here and we took some of them out of the cooler and then we have these are the mr owl potatoes here uh that we growed last year the really really nice long big ones we save these out to grow slips off of. This one was actually still in the pot when I was turning it here just a few minutes ago. So we're going to reuse it. Now there's not a lot to doing this. It's not really rocket science. The main thing is don't wet them too much. Because if they get wet, they will rot. And the soil is already moist. Because we water our pots every day in here whether they have anything in them or not. We just kind of keep them damp. And what we're going to do is we're not going to wet these potatoes any because the soil is kind of cool and it's already damp. And like I said, it's not rocket science doing this. You just really rake some of this stuff over to the side. And I just start my potatoes down about, I don't know, probably two to three inches below the soil. I like six inches would be better. And what we're doing here is... We're going to come back and top dress this with some more potting soil so that it's really loose and the roots have a really loose medium. So when we go to break these off, we'll have a, a long stem of roots. Now you see uh, here already, you see how long this potato is? This potato is about six inches long. And if I go from there to the top of this pot, that's going to be about six inches of roots on a potato. So that's the reason we're not going any deeper that we're going right here. And it doesn't matter really how close together you put them. Just, you can put them in there as thick as you really want them. It's not going to, uh, not going to hurt them. Just, we just put them in the ground. Guys, let me tell you something. It may not look like I'm putting many potatoes in the ground here. But normally, under normal conditions, these this one pot of potatoes here will probably produce anywhere between two to five hundred slips once they get going really good. Let me just kind of get, I got one more here. I'm trying to get as many of them in here as I can. And by these potatoes coming out of a cooler, already being kind of cool, and this soil's kind of cool, it's not going to be that big of a shock to them. So hopefully, when we top dress this with some good, uh, we use Schultz potting soil. We're going to put some Schultz potting soil on top of it. It will probably... Uh, help it to warm up that much faster. 
Yes, these were our potatoes. And the one beside the cabbage here is our potatoes. This is what I like about these pots. We, we fertilize these pots with commercial fertilizer and different things. And people go, oh, you're killing all your microbes. You have no worms. We have worms in all of our pots here. They, there's no truth to that. Guys, I also have a manual that I have wrote about growing sweet potatoes and everything about them that you can find on our Etsy store. And yes, there are alternate ways to grow sweet potatoes. You can get a glass or a mason jar and stick one in it with toothpicks. And if you want to work your butt off, hey, go for it. You're going to get five or six slips off of it, maybe. Do it this way, and you'll get hundreds. I mean, we're not planting a few raised beds. We're planting fields. So for us to do a jar thing, or you can even do it in a little aluminum pans, and it works really good. Put some soil in it and set the potatoes down in it. That works good. But we're planting such a large area that it's just not feasible for us to do it in the jar or the little pans or something like that. We have to have hundreds. I mean, like we normally plant anywhere between 600 to 900 slips every year. And some years more than that. So it just depends on, and plus we give them away to, to family and friends and stuff like that. So it pays us to, to try to do as many as we can. And guys, I'm in south mississippi and because of the powers to be and all their so-called intel i'm not permitted to sell slips anymore i used to sell a lot of switch head of slips when we had some left over and they've now taken that right away from us and made it illegal for us to sell them so no need contacting me wanting sweet potato slips or anything like that. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do it. They, they won't let me do it. I can get in trouble. You can get in trouble. We just uh, have family and friends now that we gift a few to whenever we get, uh, when we get uh, more than what we need. Once we get our fields planted then we and yes some of these are end up being on top of the others it's not going to matter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter a thing in the world now our variety of sweet potatoes i have no idea what they are uh we have planted in the past multiple varieties i do not know which one it is but i do know these potatoes here in this pot are the evangelines they were created in uh louisiana and we, they've been a really good potato. They taste fantastic. They make a big, long, smooth potato. Very dark orange. Uh, really like them. Uh, we mailed out a bunch of them this year to people. I don't know whether they were able to keep them or not. We were able to keep ours, so we had them in a cooler. And pretty much this is the end of ours. We don't have any more <laughs> other than what we've canned in jars and stuff. That's why we're anxious to get more in the ground and get them going like we are. Now we have uh, some more white ones that we're going to be planting over in the small greenhouse over yonder. But before we go over there, our new thermometers and humidity meters has come in from Grower Solutions here. Because we're trying to keep up with the humidity and the temperatures and stuff like that here in the high tone. And we're trying to Keep an eye on more than one thermometer at a time, just because you never know. I mean, I'm kind of like, how do I know one thermometer is actually right? I mean, I'm banking on one, and I'm going to try to uh, use more than one. So we decided to order us one from Grower Solutions. Now, it has a pop-out back on it. 
you can you can hang it out like this. It's got a place to put a screw in it or anything like that. Right now, since I took it out of the pack, I mean, I don't know how actually how fast it actually works, but according to it right now, we're at about, I don't know, close to 50% humidity in here, which is almost perfect because between 40 and 70 is classified as ideal. The temperature is saying is around 64. Of course, my hand is back there too. My hand is warm. Uh, saying it's about... 64 65 degrees in here this one's saying about 62 over here 63 also on here it tells you with your humidity where the normal zone is where it's if it gets humid or if it's very dry and then over on the temperature it gives you a comfort zone which is between 65 and 75 as far as perfect growing temperatures in your high tunnels now right now we are technically in a perfect zone for both of them the humidity's probably going up. The humidity is going up because we just took it out of the pack. I don't actually have a way I could I could put it up here. If it hold. To do like that. That'll tell me the temperature up this high. Now wherever you put it at, that's the height. I would rather have it down, you know, where my plants is at to be able to know the temperature down here. So what I might do, this is down more in the growing range. That'll what, tell us our temperatures. What do you think about those tomatoes, Papa? Oh, look at tomatoes in the background. And it is January the 29th, and we have been picking tomatoes technically all winter. <laughs> okay, guys, we're headed over to the other small greenhouse that we have over by the cabin on the other piece of property over here to put our white sweet potatoes in over there as part of our experiment as to which one comes up the quickest. And I just have to stop every time I come in here and I have to look at these I mean, look at the size of these rutabagas. I've learned if I prune a few of the leaves off of them, the rutabaga actually gets bigger because all the growth is not going to all the leaves on it. Um, that's actually working out really nice. I mean, these are actually turning out to be some good looking rutabagas there. I mean, look at that. I think we're gonna do well with them. Okay, guys, we walked over because we also got a, a meter from Grower Solution to go in Wanda's high tunnel. And look at this. It is humid in here. It is very humid in here, as a matter of fact. It's up to like 95%. Oh, yeah. 92%. But we don't have to water as much. And look at the English peas coming up. Ms. Wanda came in here the other day and snuck in and planted some English peas. And they are doing fantastic down through here. I mean, all the way down, they are doing really, really well. I mean, they're starting to put runners on them. Yeah, we should have... A little run of English peas popping up good here for before long. Wanda's cucumbers are actually coming up good. We didn't start none of these in pots. She just put them straight in the soil instead of uh, trying to plant them in containers. Well, here we have Ms. Wanda planting the Cherokee yellow wax beans, and I see they're starting to pop through the ground here. Uh, not all of them, but some of them are actually starting to come up here really nice against this back wall. It must be getting warm. Yep, and then the rutabagas down there. Not rutabagas, but... Uh, radishes. Radishes, yeah. There's one of tomatoes in here uh, overwintered. Didn't freeze all the way. Look at those. Look how they've come back out. They you can't coming. even tell that they yeah. were just stems a month ago. Yeah, they were just a little... I cut them all off, and man, look at this. We're hoping to have early tomatoes this year. Now, this is the beef steak, and we just come through every so often and just kind of... Shake them a little bit like this, and look at that. Oh, look at that. We've got tomatoes there. Look up under here. That one's even bigger. Look at the size of that one. That's a nice tomato there. And they're blooming like crazy. Well, guys, our multiplying onions after the bad freeze this year knocked them down and killed them almost to the ground are starting to come back out. Got a little bit of weed we need to come around through here and do to... Um, to keep the weeds out of them but hey man look they're starting to come back look this was one onion stuck in the ground last fall look at it now there must be uh let's see there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen onions from one onion last fall already done multiplied to that point and this is a 16 foot bed yep this is a 16 foot bed and they won't come out until probably June. We'll be able to sell some of them in June or July. 
uh, to people, and they'll just keep multiplying. It, it's not the end of it. They're going to keep going. So this is this is pretty exciting to see this bed doing this well after that freeze of 2022 was so bad. Well, guys, here we are over in our little bitty greenhouse. This is a 10 by 10. Uh, got roll-up sides on it and everything. We got a big pot here now. We're going to put some sweet potatoes in this. Get some of this junk out of here. There we go. Now, this is our white sweet potatoes we're going to put in here. All we had on the white ones were real big ones. Because the white ones, my daddy, if you look back at my past videos, I always tell you, my daddy told me, he said, if you want sweet potatoes, plant the white ones. He said, because they will make bunches. And, guys, he has not lied. I mean, they they made bunches. Now, these, actually, we, uh, we lost some of our white ones. And... Some of our subscribers actually helped us have some of our original white sweet potatoes back, which was totally exciting to know that we didn't lose out on the strain that we already had because we had sold a bunch of sweet potatoes to some of our uh, subscribers and they were good enough to uh, get them back to us after we lost them. But guys, let me tell you something. I got this facing the sun right here to heat this pot up because the ground is pretty cold in that. Hopefully, we're going to lock this one down, get it really hot in here, and we're going to see how much effect heat has on growing these things. But uh, just to show you guys, we want to work with you. Ms. Wanda found some sweet potatoes that she had dug up and thrown out to the side in this pot here. What we're going to do is we're going to take these, and this is just a plastic tote from Walmart. We put some soil in it. We're just gonna take these potatoes, go down through here, and we're gonna stick them in this soil. And we're gonna see how just a plastic tote from Walmart. Now, if y'all watch our videos, last year you saw me and Ms. Lippy actually getting sweet potato slips out of this one here to plant in the garden. Even taters that little, we're gonna experiment with them. Let's see how well they do. There we go. This one is covered up now. This is a, I don't know, probably 14 by 24 inch. I mean, something like that, full of uh, nothing but just pot and soil. The Schultz right here. We got Schultz pot and soil and some of our own homemade dirt here at the house that we get out of our trash piles. We mixed it all together and put it in here so that we don't have just straight pot and soil. And I know y'all are gonna ask the question, have I fertilized them or anything? And the answer is actually no right now because this has a nine month, uh, somewhere on the bag it says, feeds up to nine months. And so we put some pot and soil in here and it already has some time release fertilizer in it. And once they get growing and kind of standing up about two inches tall, I'll come in with some uh, uh, miracle Grow and mix it up, not heavy, or fish emulsion. Depends on which one we have at the time because we have both of them pretty much stocked up. I'll either come in with fish emulsion and pour over them or I'll pour a little bit of miracle Grow over them and then I won't do anything else to them. I'll just let them grow from that point because they're actually living off of the potato till they get growing up here. And once they get up above the ground about two inches or three inches, then the roots begin to form into the soil and they kind of cease to live on the potato and they start pulling nutrients from the soil. And what I do at that time is I hit them with the fish emulsion or if I've got miracle Grow, I'll hit them with a little bit of miracle Grow. One of the other things I want to talk to you about is uh, we live in zone eight. We're 30 miles from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I'm planting now, it's January the 29th. I'm putting mine in the ground to grow slips. If you live north of me, don't put yours in the ground now because it's too early. Uh, now, if you live in zone nine or further down, yeah, you can go ahead and put them in the ground now and go ahead and start growing your slips. You need to kind of judge when your last frost date is because it takes about 
four to six weeks to get a good stand of uh, sweet potato slips started. Now they'll be just starting to pan, and, and even that's going to depend on how warm this tub gets. If unless this soil gets to 70 plus degrees, these potatoes are not going to start growing. I mean, they need 70 plus degrees to even begin to start putting on slips. They'll sit in that soil for two or three months and not grow if that soil doesn't reach 70 degrees. Uh, to give you a prime example of that is when I was turning the soil in those pots over there at the other high tunnel, I dug up a potato that's been in there since last year. And it ain't even started sprouting because the soil was so cold. And we know that we have warmer temperatures starting to come and our greenhouses will be getting up to around 80 and 90 degrees here in the next few days. And hopefully these black pots, the thermal mass in them will begin to heat up. And I even have been known to do this now. I'm not, I don't allocate this, but I've been known to do it. I've been known to run warm water out of the tap faucet into a container and come out and water my pots with warm water. Now, not, not hot, hot water, but just warm water to get the soil in that pot deep after having sit there all winter to get it to begin to acclimate to being warm. And it's the little tricks like that that we just don't tell everybody. But I thought this time around, I might say, hey, let's just throw that little tip out there and, and tell you, put some warm water on them. And it, a lot of times, it'll help speed the process up. Now, once again, guys, let me remind you, if you're in zone 7 and above, I would not be putting my sweet potatoes in the ground now. I would wait another probably two to three weeks before I started putting them in the ground to grow. Uh, because anything above the 33rd parallel is just going to be difficult. Y'all are going to be on a roller coaster this year. Cold, hot, cold, hot. And when I say cold, I'm talking about ice storms, snow periodically, uh, back into screaming hot weather. It's going to be a a gamble. It's going to be bad enough for us here down in the south. We're going to be wet and hot as heck. I mean, so it's it's going to be a gamble for us to keep things from rotting because it just gets too hot down here, and then we're going to hit. We're, we're going. To, we've already been told we're going to be hit with droughts and stuff. So it's going to be a roller coaster for all of us. But I would wait if I'm in zone seven or, or above. I would wait another two to three weeks before I started putting my sweet potatoes in the ground because you're just not going to be able to get your slips out till probably, probably somewhere close to May or June for a lot of people. And then you're going to have to have a variety that gets ready in less than a hundred days because many of y'all only have a ninety-day growing period, and you've got to have those slips up and ready to stick in the ground because normal sweet potatoes takes around 120 to 125 days, but you're going to have to hunt a variety that only takes 100 days or less to grow. And there is one out there, it's called a Chicago something, I forget what the name of it, it's a newer variety uh, that's made for the colder climates. It don't have a lot of vines, it mainly focuses all of its growth on the roots. So guys, let me just go ahead and tell you again, go check out our Etsy store if you're interested in a sweet potato manual that I've wrote. It tells all about how to grow them, all the ins and outs and ups and downs. And it's not only talking, it's pictures. I give you pictures from my place. I didn't go on the internet and pull a picture off of something. It's pictures from my place here, what I've done to grow mine here in the deep south. And you don't have to mimic it exactly, but it's got a lot of good information in it that might help you in your climate or your zone to be able to grow you some sweet potatoes because guys, let's face it, this is the year. Don't let this year go without providing your food. And those of you who watched my porch time, I told you that 2023 is gonna be a year of ups and downs, fire and rain and drought and floods and everything else. And I told you we weren't gonna look at it as a year of challenges. We're gonna be looking at it as a year of solutions. And guys, the things I've showed you today on sweet potatoes and growing the slips is one of the solutions to helping us get through this as much as we can. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.